Frederick North 1770-1782. Frederick North, the second Earl of Guilford, was a prominent British statesman who served as Prime Minister from 1770 to 1782. Born on April 13, 1732, into a family with a rich political legacy, North inherited his father's earldom and entered the political arena at an early age. Educated at Eton and Trinity College, Cambridge, North displayed intellectual acumen and a keen interest in politics, laying the foundation for a career that would shape the course of British history. As a member of the Whig Party, North initially rose to prominence under the mentorship of his father, the first Earl of Guilford. His early political career was marked by various ministerial roles, including positions in the Treasury and the Board of Trade. However, it was not until the death of Lord Rockingham in 1782 that North assumed the position of Prime Minister, a role that would define his legacy. The period from 1770 to 1782 was a tumultuous era in British history, marked by unprecedented challenges both at home and abroad. The American colonies were simmering with discontent, laying the groundwork for what would evolve into the American Revolution. Tensions between Britain and its colonies escalated over issues of taxation, representation, and governance, leading to a series of confrontations that ultimately ignited the flames of rebellion. Meanwhile, on the European front, Britain found itself entangled in complex diplomatic and military conflicts. The geopolitical landscape was shifting, with traditional alliances evolving and new threats emerging. The global repercussions of the Seven Years' War, 1756 to 1763, continued to reverberate, shaping Britain's foreign policy and influencing its imperial aspirations. Against this backdrop of political and social upheaval, Frederick North assumed the role of Prime Minister, stepping into a leadership vacuum left by the death of Lord Rockingham. North's tenure coincided with one of the most critical junctures in British history, as the empire grappled with the burgeoning crisis in its American colonies and faced challenges on multiple fronts. North's leadership during this period was marked by the weight of monumental decisions and the necessity to navigate a complex web of domestic and international issues. His policies and strategies would play a pivotal role in determining the fate of the British Empire and its relationship with its American colonies. The significance of North's leadership lies not only in the specific policies he implemented but also in his attempts to manage the profound transformations occurring on the global stage. Frederick North's early life was steeped in privilege and political heritage. Born on April 13, 1732, into the aristocratic North family, he inherited the title of second Earl of Guilford from his father, the first Earl of Guilford. The Norths were a well-established political dynasty with a strong presence in British politics, providing young Frederick with a backdrop of political discourse and influence from an early age. Growing up on the family estate in Roxton, Oxfordshire, North received a comprehensive education that included attending Eton College and later matriculating to Trinity College, Cambridge. This educational foundation equipped him with the intellectual prowess and social connections essential for a successful political career. His upbringing instilled in him a sense of duty to the family legacy and a commitment to public service, shaping the trajectory of his future endeavors. Frederick North's entry into politics was a natural progression given his family background and educational experiences. He made his debut in the political arena in 1754 when he was elected as the Member of Parliament MP, for Banbury. His early years in Parliament were marked by a diligent approach to his duties, earning him a reputation for intelligence and dedication. North's rise to prominence within political circles was swift. His father's influence, combined with his own talents, saw him ascend to various ministerial positions. Notably, he held roles in the Treasury and the Board of Trade, gaining valuable experience and insight into the intricacies of governance. His administrative capabilities and calm demeanor under pressure set the stage for his eventual elevation to the highest office in the land. Throughout his political career, Frederick North aligned himself with the Whig Party, a political faction with deep historical roots in British politics. However, it's important to note that the political landscape of the time was characterized by fluid alliances and shifting loyalties. North's early affiliations within the Whig Party set the foundation for his later political endeavors. One of the key alliances that significantly influenced North's career was his association with the Marquess of Rockingham. Under Rockingham's mentorship, 
North solidified his position within the Whig Party and gained crucial insights into the dynamics of parliamentary politics. This alliance played a pivotal role in shaping North's trajectory, ultimately leading to his appointment as Prime Minister upon Rockingham's death in 1782. North's ability to navigate the complex web of political alliances and build strategic relationships was a testament to his diplomatic skills. These early affiliations not only propelled him into positions of power but also exposed him to the challenges and intricacies of political maneuvering that would define his tenure as Prime Minister during a period of profound historical significance. Frederick North's ascent to the position of Prime Minister in 1770 was shaped by a confluence of political circumstances and the untimely death of his predecessor, Lord Rockingham. The death of Rockingham left a void in leadership, and a power struggle ensued within the Whig Party. North, with his established political credentials and the support of key factions within the party, emerged as a compromise candidate. The King, George III, played a significant role in North's appointment. The King saw in North a reliable and pragmatic statesman who could navigate the turbulent political waters of the time. The fact that North was willing to assert royal authority and pursue policies aligned with the King's vision made him an appealing choice. Thus, in March 1770, Frederick North officially became the Prime Minister of Great Britain, a position that would thrust him into the midst of complex domestic and international challenges. North assumed the role of Prime Minister at a critical juncture, inheriting a set of challenges left unresolved by his predecessor, Lord Rockingham. One of the most pressing issues was the escalating tensions between Britain and its American colonies. The seeds of discontent had been sown, and North found himself grappling with the aftermath of policies that had strained colonial relations. Additionally, Lord Rockingham's death had created a power vacuum within the Whig Party, leading to internal divisions and rivalries. The delicate balance Rockingham had maintained was disrupted, and North faced the challenge of consolidating party support while managing dissenting factions. The inherent complexities of these challenges set the stage for a tumultuous tenure as Prime Minister. In the early days of his prime ministership, Frederick North adopted a pragmatic and conciliatory approach to address the challenges inherited from Lord Rockingham's administration. North sought to stabilize the domestic situation by attempting to ease tensions with the American colonies. His initial policies aimed at finding common ground and avoiding further escalation of the brewing conflict. One of North's notable moves was the repeal of the Townsend Acts in 1770, which had imposed taxes on various goods imported to the American colonies. This gesture was an attempt to de-escalate tensions and restore a degree of harmony. However, despite these conciliatory measures, North continued to face resistance from colonial leaders who sought more comprehensive reforms. North's approach to governance reflected a delicate balancing act between upholding royal authority, placating colonial grievances, and navigating the complex dynamics within the Whig Party. His tenure as Prime Minister would be defined by his efforts to manage these multifaceted challenges, laying the groundwork for the pivotal events that would unfold during the American Revolution and shaping the course of British history during this critical period. The period leading up to the American Revolution was characterized by a series of escalating tensions between Britain and its American colonies. The root causes of discontent were multifaceted and included issues of taxation without representation, restrictions on colonial trade, and a growing desire for greater autonomy. The relationship between the colonies and the British Crown had become increasingly strained, and a sense of colonial identity and unity was emerging. The passage of acts such as the Sugar Act, 1764, and the Stamp Act, 1765, had already sparked protests and resistance in the colonies. The cry of, no taxation without representation, reverberated as colonists felt that they were being subjected to levies without having a voice in the British Parliament. Attempts to assert British authority and collect revenues only intensified the simmering discontent, laying the groundwork for open conflict. Frederick North found himself at the center of the escalating conflict between Britain and its American colonies. As Prime Minister, he inherited a situation marked by deep-seated grievances and a growing spirit of resistance. North was tasked with addressing the challenges posed by the American colonists while simultaneously upholding British imperial interests. Despite his attempts at conciliation, North's policies often fueled the flames of discontent. 
The deployment of British troops to quell unrest and the imposition of measures such as the Quartering Act, which required colonists to house and feed British soldiers, further strained relations. North faced the daunting task of managing a crisis that had far-reaching implications for the British Empire. One of the pivotal moments during North's tenure was the implementation of controversial policies that heightened tensions and set the stage for open conflict. The Tea Act of 1773, designed to rescue the financially troubled British East India Company, granted it a monopoly on tea sales in the colonies. However, the Act maintained the tea tax, exacerbating colonial resentment. The Boston Tea Party of 1773, in which colonists dumped British tea into Boston Harbor in protest, was a direct response to the Tea Act. In retaliation, North's government enacted a series of punitive measures known as the Intolerable Acts, Coercive Acts, in 1774. These acts included the Boston Port Act, which closed the port of Boston until restitution was made for the destroyed tea, and the Massachusetts Government Act, which altered the colonial government's structure. The Intolerable Acts not only heightened tensions but also united the colonies in opposition to British rule. The First Continental Congress convened in 1774, marking a significant step towards colonial unity. North's policies inadvertently pushed the American colonies closer to the brink of revolution, setting the stage for the armed conflict that would erupt in 1775 with the battles of Lexington and Concord. Frederick North's role in the events leading to the American Revolution was complex, marked by attempts at reconciliation and governance, but ultimately characterized by policies that deepened the divide between Britain and its American colonies. His decisions during this critical period would have profound and lasting consequences, shaping the course of history on both sides of the Atlantic. Facing the growing crisis in the American colonies, Frederick North made sincere efforts to reconcile with the discontented colonists and prevent an all-out war. Recognizing the severity of the situation, North proposed a series of conciliatory measures in an attempt to ease tensions and address some of the colonists' grievances. In 1775, North presented the Conciliatory Resolution, a proposal that aimed to grant greater autonomy to the colonies in matters of taxation. The resolution suggested that if the colonies contributed a certain amount of revenue to the British Empire for defense and administration, Parliament would refrain from taxing the colonies internally. Unfortunately, the proposal failed to gain traction both in Britain and the colonies, as by this time, the Continental Congress had declared independence, and the Revolutionary War was already underway. North's attempts at reconciliation demonstrated a genuine desire to avoid further bloodshed and maintain the unity of the British Empire. However, the deep-rooted issues and the momentum of revolutionary sentiments had progressed beyond the point where diplomatic gestures could effectively resolve the crisis. As the American Revolutionary War unfolded, Frederick North, though primarily a political leader, was compelled to make critical decisions regarding military strategies. The conflict presented complex challenges, including the vast distance between Britain and the American colonies, as well as the need to suppress rebellion while dealing with external threats from other European powers supporting the American cause. North's government faced the difficulty of managing a war effort across the Atlantic. Military strategies included attempts to control key cities, isolate revolutionary strongholds, and employ naval power to disrupt colonial trade. British forces, led by commanders such as General William Howe, engaged in major battles, including the Battle of Bunker Hill, the Battle of Saratoga, and the Southern Theater campaigns. Despite early successes, the British military campaign faced significant setbacks. The distance, the unfamiliar terrain, and the guerrilla tactics employed by the colonial forces created formidable challenges. The military engagements of the American Revolution under North's leadership were marked by a combination of victories and defeats, ultimately leading to a protracted conflict that strained British resources and resolve. Frederick North's administration during the American Revolution faced intense criticism and challenges on multiple fronts. Domestically, political opposition questioned the government's handling of the war, particularly its strategies, resource allocation, and the perceived lack of a clear exit strategy. Parliamentarians, including some within North's own party, voiced concerns about the feasibility and morality of continuing the conflict. The war's financial toll further strained the British economy, leading to increased taxation and public dissatisfaction. Additionally, 
the need to maintain a sizable military presence in North America placed significant burdens on British resources. The global nature of the conflict also saw Britain contending with the involvement of other European powers, such as France and Spain, further complicating the strategic landscape. North's leadership faced criticism not only for the handling of the war but also for the perceived mishandling of colonial policies that contributed to the outbreak of hostilities. The shortcomings in his attempts at reconciliation, combined with the military challenges, fueled discontent among both the political elite and the general public. North's administration encountered significant political opposition and internal dissent within Britain. The handling of the American Revolution, coupled with the economic strains and taxation required to fund the war, led to growing discontent among both political elites and the general public. Opposition figures within Parliament, including some members of North's own party, voiced criticisms of the war effort and questioned the government's overall strategy. One of the most prominent voices of opposition was Charles James Fox, a Whig politician who vehemently opposed the war and became a vocal critic of North's leadership. Fox, along with other opposition leaders, argued for a negotiated settlement with the American colonies and criticized the government's perceived mismanagement of the conflict. Internal dissent extended beyond Parliament, with public protests and expressions of discontent becoming more pronounced. The political landscape was further complicated by the emergence of factions within the Whig Party itself, creating a fractured political environment. The challenges posed by internal dissent and political opposition underscored the difficulty of managing a prolonged and unpopular war. North's ability to navigate these challenges and maintain a semblance of stability within the government was a testament to his political acumen, but it also highlighted the deep divisions and tensions within British society during this tumultuous period. Frederick North's resignation in 1782 marked the end of a tumultuous period in British history and reflected a combination of internal and external pressures that had mounted during his tenure as Prime Minister. One of the primary factors leading to North's resignation was the mounting military and financial strain of the American Revolutionary War. The prolonged conflict had stretched British resources and generated widespread discontent among the public. The cost of the war and the lack of a clear path to victory contributed to a growing sense that a change in leadership might offer a fresh perspective and potentially pave the way for a negotiated settlement. Internally, North faced increasing political opposition, both within his own party and from rival factions. Charles James Fox, a prominent Whig and vocal critic of North's policies, played a key role in rallying support for a change in leadership. The combination of military setbacks, financial burdens, and political challenges made it increasingly untenable for North to continue in his role as Prime Minister. Ultimately, facing the realities of an unpopular war and a shifting political landscape, North tendered his resignation in March 1782, paving the way for a new chapter in British politics. North's tenure also played a role in shaping the evolution of British politics. The challenges he faced, both domestically and internationally, contributed to a re-evaluation of imperial policies and the role of the monarchy. The lessons learned from the American Revolution influenced subsequent leaders, shaping diplomatic strategies and imperial governance in the years to come. In conclusion, Frederick North's role as Prime Minister from 1770 to 1782 offers a rich tapestry of historical events and challenges that continue to shape our understanding of the American Revolution, British politics, and the complexities of governance during a transformative period in the 18th century. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it informative, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future.